We're going to bring in our panel now, Wendy Feliz. She's Communications Director for the American Immigration Council. And Dan Stein, President of the Federation for American Immigration Reform. Uh, very happy to have you both here. And I want to start with Wendy with you. I want to start with this. How constitutionally sound is the President's Immigration Executive Order? And do you agree with the intent? Well, I think we're going to have to leave it up to the courts to decide the constitutionality, but we've already had four judges raise serious questions about it, and that's what the stay is that was just referenced earlier. So basically, the people that um, we've tried to ban are not going to be able to be deported, but they're supposed to be admitted into the country. I don't think, honestly, this is a policy that is going to make us safer. Whenever in human history you've banned people based on their religion, there's been terrible ramifications. We are talking about mothers and children who have gone through a significant vetting process who have been waiting almost two years to get in. We're talking about individuals who helped the U.S. military in very difficult countries and have now been given refugee and asylum status in this country. We cannot keep them out. That's not fair. The, Ameri the American public is interested in fairness and fair solutions and not interested in closing our borders to the world or being mean to people who need safety and protection. All our right. country was founded by people seeking safety and protection. Dan, how do you see it? Listen, Donald Trump is doing what he said he was going to do. And I know it's kind of strange, but somebody actually campaigned on a series of positions, and now they're putting in a full day's work, and they're getting the job done. Donald Trump says we need to be safe. Americans want to be safe. And to call this an, an, a Muslim ban basically is playing into the hands of ISIS. This is not a Muslim ban. This is a temporary suspension of immigration from a handful of countries where vetting is a problem. Vetting is about guaranteeing the public safety. This is pending a review of the vetting procedures to make sure that they're effective in protecting the American people. Donald Trump has said we're going to suspend immigration for several months pending that vetting review. Now, the Constitution provides Article I powers to Congress and they have delegated to the President, along with his inherent commander-in-chief authority, broad powers to stop or exclude immigrants from any country on any basis he wants in the national interest for national security purposes. So this is clearly a constitutional order. It, it has all kinds of historical precedent. It's designed to guarantee the safety of the American people and that there are many people and organizations in this country that simply don't understand refugee admissions, immigration admissions. This is essentially a discretionary policy of the American people. People don't have the right to come into this country without okay. limit or unilaterally. People have only have the right to come in if they are deemed in the public interest and allowed to come in. And Dan uh, and Wendy were showing pictures here of, of the uh, dozens of protests that have erupted over the uh, country, across the country, uh, just yesterday. And I want to move on now to another topic with you, which is sanctuary cities. I want to ask you, Wendy, uh, should local municipalities and law enforcement be ordered by the federal government to police unauthorized immigrants or risk federal funding if they don't comply? Well, what sanctuary cities are basically saying is they don't want to use their local law enforcement resources to do federal immigration enforcement. We know local law enforcement is already stretched very thin. They have a big job to keep communities safe. So we need to allow them to keep communities safe, and that's why local law enforcement don't want to get mixed up to this. And federal immigration enforcement, they need to be two different things. They cannot be conflated. So that doesn't make us safer by making our local police not able to protect local communities, and it certainly doesn't make our community safer or better by beginning to cut funding to schools and to other needs in communities. Americans don't support these kind of policies that ask us to turn our neighbors in. Americans Wendy? don't support policies that isolate us. Okay, I'm sorry. I want to get Dan in because I want to try to squeeze in one more topic. So, Dan, if you can give me your take on, uh, on the sanctuary cities and then we'll move on. <clears throat> Look, these policies are a threat to public safety. Americans are dying all over the country because aliens who should have been deported are not being picked up by ICE uh, because cities aren't re cooperating. They're not honoring federal detainers to hold aliens who ought to be deported. And so, in the end, under the constitutional system, states have an obligation to work with the federal government cooperatively to help enforce immigration law. That doesn't mean state and local officers are immigration officers. They're not deporting aliens, but they are supposed to cooperate to hold aliens until ICE can come and pick them up. Now, what Donald Trump has said is this artificial wall where states are providing benefits to people, no questions asked, providing an incentive for people to come illegally and immigrate. This is basically you can never control illegal immigration unless the state and local governments work harmoniously with the federal government to cooperatively enforce immigration law. And thank goodness, thank goodness that's what Donald Trump is now finally trying to do. 
I have to leave it there. I'm out of time. I don't have time for another topic. Dan Stein, Wendy Felice, uh, thank you very much for your uh, comments here on Fox News.